So here's the 9 Plus. It's much bigger. Inside the box here, we have the same warranty card with registration for your product. So nothing new. Let's get rid of the boxes. So here is the 9 Plus. And we'll do a comparison against the, the 5 too. So this is the slightly older version of the 9 Plus, And as you can see, they look identical. Uh, some things to uh, look at is, of course, the logo in the middle there where the spool comes off. It is slightly different. Um, the, apart from that, uh, they are pretty much identical. But there is one big difference that you can see visually that I'll show you in a second. Um, here, the backing here, you can see the, um, the markings for the drag adjustment. Those are quite different now. Uh, before they were hollow circles, now they're filled in circles and it's much more evident. So let's, um, let's take a look. So the 9 Plus here is a massive reel. I don't imagine a lot of people are using these for single hand rods. This is probably going to be a spay rod. And you know what, for a nine, uh, a size nine reel, this is actually really light. Uh, it, uh, they advertise it at 8.46 ounces. And we'll just double check if that is correct. Because I know a lot of spay people, they, well a lot of people in general, weight becomes an issue when you're balancing a setup. And when you're spay casting, I believe a balancing a setup is uh, more important than a single hand rod. So this comes out at 242 ounces or 8.5 ounces and that's pretty much exactly what they advertise on their site so this one is on par with what they say um, so this guy weighs 8.5 ounces is good weight it'll balance a lot of spay rods um, it definitely sounds different and I think this sounds it's much high like you much more audible sound you can hear it much better the, the sound is different when you go forward and when you go backwards. Let's take a listen to this guy, Ken. So this is the newer model, just so you know. The sound is more dampened. The reason being is, in the old one, um, the clicker is inside the actual drag mechanism. But if you look at the old one here, you can see at the very back here, that little black clicker thing. I'll take off the spool and you can see a lot better. Is actually on the exterior. So just like if you've seen the lamps and reels, the lamps and reels have all exterior clickers, and this one does too, and that's why you hear it much better. So, the slightly older one, um, I think, you know what, that might just be, that just might be it. So let's take off the spool. So the same as last one, you just unscrew the middle part here. This comes off. And here you go. Um, like the other one, this is extremely lightweight very durable it's really rigid it's not going to bend on you but here you can see the clicker at the very back here and that's what's making the sound so i guess they took the clicker and put it on the inside um, and i much prefer the inside clicker because i think that uh, having that exposed is, is not very good design i feel that it doesn't look very nice but it does sound nice though so i'll give it that um, just like the other one, the casing here is it's solid, um, just bigger, that's all. To, line, to put the reel back on is the exact same thing. Line up those little metal grooves there um, and push together. And then replace the cap on the end. Of course, the cap comes off, but we know that. Um, but what, what I am really kind of surprised at is a drag on this guy. So with no drag, this guy has virtually zero sharp inertia with no drag at all and free spools a tad better than the newer versions and you could probably get two or three revolutions by free spooling it um, but let's go up and check the drag so with completely disengaged drag it's about here and it's so that's one revolution it does about two full revolutions on the drag knob so let's disengage Alright, let's go to one quarter. So one quarter would roughly be over here. Still same thing. Very, pretty much no sharp inertia. You can see I'm just pushing it like this. It's very smooth. Like this drag is really smooth. And let's go up to one half now. So one half is about here. 
not much more drag resistance, but it's still smooth. Um, yeah, it's pretty much the same as what it was in the last setting. Uh, let's just bump it up to one. So here's one full revolution on the drag knob. And we're starting to feel some resistance here. So this is a good resistance. Um, at this point, the drag is still extremely smooth. There's really no sharp inertia. This is as smooth as any other drag I've, I've touched. Uh, feels really good. Let's go to one and a half now. So at one and a half, um, the drag is still really smooth. This, with, even with the increased tension, you could still move this, like, as you can see here, it's consistent throughout. Um, the sharp inertia is really small, or mm, it's still there, but just, it's neglectable. It's, it's just like the Nautilus. The Nautilus are notorious for a very low sharp inertia, and this really has no sharp inertia. And let's go max. So max, that's at two revolutions. It's lots of tension, you'll probably never be at this point, but it's really smooth. As you can see, when I'm moving my hand around the reel, it's pretty smooth. I'm moving at a consistent speed. Um, yeah, it feels really good. So for this one, I give really high marks for the drag. And let's do that same test with the 5 Plus. And with, if you put the drag in, like you're seeing here how it just kind of darts off because uh, the, the drag is just inconsistent. And there's tons of sharp inertia. So if I push this here, it just... It just, you kind of see what I mean? And let's grab this guy here, fully engage him. And yeah, I'm just moving this one so much more fluid, you know, it's, it's much more consistent. I don't, they say that they're the same drags in both systems, um, but I do feel that there's a big difference. I would use this guy. This guy has a much better drag at the high drag settings. This one has a poor drag in the high settings. Um, but if you're not using the drag, it is, again, it's really smooth. You're not going to have a problem. Even at a quarter, it feels pretty good. Anything other than that, anything above that, I feel it gets, um, the performance decreases quite a bit. Uh, so let's talk about pricing on these guys. So the five on my right here, they sell this guy for 612 US dollars. Um, that is considerably high. This might be one of the most expensive reels uh, with single-handed reels out there. Um, the quality is definitely there, but I I would be hard-pressed to pay that kind of money for this reel at $612. On the other hand, we have the 9 weight. This guy sells for $732. US dollars. Um, but you know what? I feel this the older model of the of the plus reels, um, it, it actually performs better. I don't know if this is a one-off, but again, this is brand new from the distributor, so I, I don't see why this one would be any different. Um, with that kind of money, you'd expect them to have quality control, so I'm assuming that this is um, just like any of the other reels that they have, but uh, without playing with another one, I, I really can't say. So this one here, which is the 9 Plus again, this one is solid. The drag system is great. It is lightweight for its size. Um, the drag knob is good, just like the other one. Um, but I feel this is a much more higher performing reel. Um, and you know what? The thing about reels in general is the drag system is pretty much is pretty much it. If it has a good drag system, it's a good reel generally. And if it has a poor one, then you know what? It's really not a good reel. Uh, but for this price tag at $732 for a spay reel, this will fit tons of line on it. It's wide as well as the 5. So here's a comparison side to side here. Um, but I do feel this one is vastly superior to that one in terms of um, the drag setting. Of course, it has an exposed clicker here, which I'm not a big fan of, but I would overlook it. At $732, I feel this one is a better value than the other one. Um, but there are tons of reels out there. Um, and you know what? This one is its a great reel. I recommend it. It's, it's nice and it looks good. It's very durable. Um, Anderson has a good warranty. Not much, not there's not much to dislike about it, but this one because of the drag, I, I just I can't get over that for that kind of price tag at five six hundred and twelve, for the drag like this, um, you're better off getting something else for sure, and that is kind of it for these two. And thank you for watching. Um, and again, those are the Anderson Plus series. So on the right here, this is a five plus. On the left here, this is a nine plus. Thank you.